How did you get over it? Um, it took me probably 16 years of going in and out of different rehabs or, huh. you know, back and forth from sober to, you know, relapsing. Um, there was a, at one point I went, my first rehab, I went to a 30-day rehab. And I don't, I, I mean, at that time, I still didn't know the significance, the depth of how bad it was or how strong the addiction was. Because the day that I got out, I called my dealer. After 30 days of rehab, I called my dealer. So you got out and got some more coke. Exactly. Wow. And so, and so for the last 16 years, it's been a, a, a thing of like, okay, I'll get six months sober, relapse, five years sober, relapse, you know, back and forth. Six different rehabs. Um, I don't know how many different relapses over the last 16 years, but even now, um, I sit here at two years and seven months sober. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, I interviewed uh, Fab Marvan from Milli Vanilli, mm -hmm. and we were talking about the death right. of, of Rob. Right. And a lot of people think it was a suicide, but he thinks that... My dude was on his way to, uh, to uh, India to sober up 100%, and he was in a program in Germany that was paid, I think, by Frank because Frank was courting Rob to do whatever it was he wanted, wanted to do. And um, for some reason, man, the day of his departure, my dude partied his heart out. So that makes no sense to me. You're about to sober up, but you know, in the mind of an addict, nothing is really clear until you're out of the tunnel. So maybe just like back in the days, we were like, yo, we're gonna stop for one week. So we go cold turkey, one week, nothing. But the week after, it's like, man, double up, bro, double up. So, you know, maybe it's one of those, like, I'm gonna do one last time. That could have happened to me too, because every so time before I went into treatment, I did a, you know, a big, I had a big run. Big Scarface pile on, absolutely. Your, <laughs> on your desk. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Okay. How hard, Amy, for you was it to deal with this person that you love and you're seeing him just can't get this monkey off his back. It was really hard. I mean, as difficult and painful that you would think or imagine, it was all of that because it's someone you love and when you put drugs in the picture, at any point in time, he can go to jail, he could get hurt, and he could die. So I was always faced with, oh my gosh, I could lose the love of my life. I could lose my best friend. So it was always life or death. I lived in a constant state of um, life or death, you know, which right. definitely was just like traumatic. It definitely altered my personality for sure. Right. What was the, like the lowest thing that you did for cocaine? That I actually did for cocaine? Yeah. Um, probably just sold everything I had even down to one time, I, I remember selling my boots, my Timberland boots. Really? That had like, you know, like I, I designed myself, they had like my initials and autograph and just something that I was just keeping. And I remember one day just looking around the house for whatever, like finding old video cameras to whatever it is I could pawn, take to the pawn shop or give to the dealer to get 50 bucks worth or whatever. Wow. For me, that was like the lowest. And even then it was just, you know, like it didn't register to me at the time. Like, oh, this is low, like this is my bottom. I think my bottom for me was more physical and emotional and mental torment of just the heaviness of the pain of, I would use so much that there was a time that I would call her and say, hey, I'm just letting you know I'm using right now and I'll call you when I'm done. Just to, I don't know what that was. For me, it was just kind of a manipulation just to say, look, don't worry about me or whatever. Um, and then it got to the point where when I would try to call her, I couldn't even speak. Like words wouldn't even come out. I was, so, I was up for three or four days using, so I couldn't even form. It was just like that. Yeah, come, yeah, 
it, it was just like horrible. And then she comes in the hotel and I got all these towels and tissues that are just all bloody all over the place from blowing my nose and, oh, wow. you know, just on and on. And I can't even stand it. I'm just beating myself up again. And I got a backpack just full of cocaine and pills and just every drug you could possibly imagine in there. And it's just, they call that a... Um, uh, demoralizing, incomp you know, incomprehensible demoralization. Yeah. That bottom of just, uh, just really ugly. Well, at one point you guys decided to get married. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess it was a double marriage with you and Ralph Tresman? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a double wedding. Yeah, um, they, they were in love at the same time we were in love and yeah. we were just talking about it together. Yeah. And we were casually talking about getting married. We are like, let's call Ralph and Amber and see if they want to get married with us. They were like, yeah. Do you remember that? I remember that, yeah. And they were into it, so we were like, you know, it was very casual. But yeah. It kind of felt like the right thing to do because yeah. Ralph and Ricky were best friends. Yeah, right. But you, you were still using it at the time. Yeah, that was actually the beginning. Yeah, that was yeah. still, uh, that was, was that was of, still, because we've been married for 14 years. Yeah. So that was the very beginning of my using. I mean, it was, it was still... I was working hard at keeping, a, keeping it a secret. So, you know, like she knew that I was still dealing with it, but still didn't know the depth and how, the, how serious it was for me because I was doing a lot of hiding. Um, the night before our wedding, I, stood, I stayed up the whole night using mm -hmm. that night. So once the wedding started, I hadn't even been to sleep in the last 24 hours because I was still up. Wow. <laughs> you know, so that's when it actually really started to take off. And, yeah. Get heavy for me. Now, Amy, you were, you were singing yourself. Yes. You had your original group. Yes. And then another group with Megan Good. Yeah, I've been in a few groups. When Ricky and I were just friends, he was my friend in the industry that knew about contracts. So I was an actress at the time. I had an audition to be in a group that was already formed by MCA that they had money behind. And I asked Rick his opinion. He's like, you should do it like you should audition you'd probably get the group and mm -hmm. so he helped with that that was my first group on MCA which was weird because we went in to sing for Randy Jackson like just kind of the same way they went in mm -hmm. like we yeah. sang on the spot mm -hmm. they're like yeah you guys got what it takes so it was really old school but mm -hmm. apparently we had a worse contract than they had <laughs> so. okay oh yeah did the projects actually come out that Girl Society group did not come out. We did a small tour. Mm -hmm. We did our first pilot for a reality television show, which was mm -hmm. new at the time. Um, but the lead singer decided to go solo, like, right at the last minute. She didn't tell us. She told the president of MCA, who then also stepped down. So we got dropped. Okay. And that's actually the beginning of when we started doing Ecstasy, too. So I needed an outlet. But from there... Um, I started working with my brother and my friend in a group called Craze.com. We did a bunch of shows around LA and Megan is my best friend. So she, her and her sister would always come to our shows and they loved it. And they said, hey, why don't we just do a group together like the four of us? And that's the Hello Girls? That's the Hello Girls, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which we named off of a Belle Biv DeVoe song. Aha, uh -huh. okay. And did that album come out? Two songs came out. Okay. It didn't quite manifest. Okay. <laughs> And you guys don't have any kids? Not yet. No, not yet. Neither one of you? No. Any reason for that? So this guy's on tour right. year round. <laughs> I guess it, and it just hasn't happened yeah. for whatever reason. But we're actually going to plan it at after the end this of this tour. tour. Okay. We have and, to plan it now. Yeah, and we're going to renew our vows after 15 years, which will be next yep. September. And um, hopefully she'll be walking down the aisle pregnant. Okay. Well, All I'd like to wear a dress without being pregnant. Right. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> well, 